Well, to answer those questions, one, yes, they are extremely helpful. Why do we need them? For so many reasons. And is there something that we can do to go ahead and have these work for us? Absolutely. So many things. So libraries are one of those things that you can call up as a panel, go into your window menu and call up libraries. Now, interestingly enough, not every Adobe software calls them libraries. Some are CC libraries, the Creative Cloud libraries. So if you look under L for libraries, they put them in different places. But the whole point of libraries is so that you can have continuity between your applications in terms of your graphics, your images, your logos, colors, text, and even paragraph and character styles and object styles, anything that you use that you don't want to go through and recreate from one application to another, what we're going to do is put them into a library. Now, in many cases, these transfer very nicely into other applications. Other times, there's a few little bumps. But the libraries have really come a long way in making it super useful for getting your information, your content, and colors, styles, type from one application to another much easier than ever before. So starting off in Illustrator, I bring up my Libraries panel. Now, the Libraries panel is fairly simple and straightforward. You can search your current library through the search here, and then you have your drop-down menu here with all the different libraries. Now, the funny thing is, is that I see this with a lot of people. They have lots of libraries called My Library because that's the default name. And so you'll see that quite a lot. But I do have other libraries here that I have put together. And so not all of them are called My Library. And we can rename those two because it doesn't make sense to have My Library, My Library, My Library. So since we're an illustrator, something that we do all the time is create vector graphics or logos. So if I wanted to grab this and put it into my library so I could use it in InDesign, I could use it in Illustrator, I could use it in Photoshop or other Adobe applications, I'm simply going to select my object or my objects here, go down to the plus at the bottom and my Add Content button, and I'm going to click. And it's going to ask me, do I want to add the fill color of this, the stroke color, or add this as a graphic? Well, adding the fill or stroke color in this particular venue doesn't work because we've got lots of different strokes and fills. So if I do click on the stroke, the fill or the stroke color, it's just going to give me white. But I do want to add the graphic to my library. And I add it to my library. It comes up under my graphics section here. And if I want to, I can double click on the name here and rename it. Hit return to get back out. Now this is permanently stored in my library. And we're going to talk about where that's actually stored. And now we get to this, not only in Illustrator, but other applications. Or if you are out and about and you need to get this via the web, we'll show you how to access that as well. So I've dropped my graphic in here. Now, what happens if I select one portion of this graphic and I like these colors? And I'd like to just add these colors to my document. Again, go over the, go under the Add Content button, click on this, and I can add the fill color, which it adds right there. I can add my stroke color right there. And I can also add just this section of the graphic all by itself if I wanted to have that, which I don't. Now, when you add the color here, you'll notice when you hover over that there's different um, color modes. Some of these I was in CMYK mode. So of course the colors show up as CMYK. Um, this one, I was actually working in hex colors. Now, what's nice about this is that when I hover over this, I can see the build color, but I can also see the hex color as well, which is kind of cool. So I'm not limited to just getting that color and nothing else. So that's kind of nice. Now, the colors here work the same way that it would work in your color panel. If I were to draw a shape and I could have my fill or my stroke selected, I could easily just go under my color panel and I could choose a fill color. But guess what? This is my color panel here as well. So if I have my fill or my stroke selected and my object, I can just go in and treat this as a color panel just like that. Okay. Now these colors are going to be available wherever you open up your library. So this makes it nice for consistency across all different applications. Now when it comes to text, we've got a couple different things that we could do. I could grab my type tool and I could type something wonderful in here. And if I'd like to keep this 
just as text. I can certainly do that. And I could just drag it up into here and add this, but I'm gonna to go to my add content here. I've got a lot of different things that I can add here. I can add this fill color here. I could add it actually as editable text here. I could, if there were a paragraph or character style applied to this, I could capture that style, which we're gonna do shortly, or I can simply capture this as a graphic. If I put this in here as text, and I just click text right here, what's gonna happen is it'll pop up right here like it's already done. Now, with that text, if I wanna drag that into another application, I just simply click and drag it out and basically put it in here, okay? Just drop it onto the my document. Now, it just gave me the text. It didn't remember the type size or anything else because I didn't ask it to. All I wanted was just simply the text. So maybe you want placeholder text, just a quick little bit of placeholder text, not a problem, okay? You can create some placeholder text and then add it by clicking the Add Content button. I'm going to drag it out onto my desktop, my document, and I'm gonna simply click, and it gave me that editable text, okay? Nothing special about it, it's just text. If you'd like it to match exactly what it is that you've done here, you can save this as a graphic. If you've gone in and you've chose a particular size and a particular font and a particular color here, then you could save this as a graphic by going into your Add Content button, saving this as a graphic, and it comes in as a graphic. What's the difference? Well, when I drag this graphic in here and I place it, it actually comes in as a graphic. Now, what's interesting here is that I didn't close up my text container before I dragged that into my uh, library here. So you can see it comes in. Now, the interesting thing about a graphic is that it comes in and it's still vector, but what's, we see this X in the middle of it here. So this is still infinitely scalable because my graphic here happened to be a vector. So I can scale this however I want. But I notice that going in and changing the color is going to be a little bit tricky, okay? So when I try to go in here and I try to edit the color, I can't go in because my control bar up across the top here is a little bit different. Now this is treating this technically like an image, and I hate to say the word image because then you think of picture, and when you think of picture, you think, oh my gosh, this is all pixel-based. Well, it isn't because these are all vector-based because this is what I dragged in here. But I could have both vector and raster, pixel-based images or graphics in here, okay? So if I did want to edit this, I could go back in to my artwork right here, and I could double-click on my artwork in my library panel. What it's going to do is it's going to save, it's going to open up that saved copy of the artwork, and you're gonna see that I have this content fully editable, okay? If, you're, if you know Photoshop, then you'd understand what a smart object is, and we'll talk about that in the Photoshop version of the library. Well, this acts like a smart object. You can get to it by double-clicking on the graphic in your library panel. You can edit any of the attributes that you want to with this. You can change the font. And once you're done with that, I'm also going to shore up my container because I don't want it this long. And then I can save this artwork. You see it's got some funny long name because it's basically saved in the cloud. Where it's saved, I'll show you. So when I close out of this, you'll notice that it updates my object in my library here, and it also updates my graphic here in the panel, which is kind of nice. Now what happens if you want to have one version of it and you want to create another version? Well, simple. You can either call this up here and drop it in here and use it that way. You can also go to your graphics, right click on this, and you can duplicate this so that you get a different section or a different graphic that you can then edit. So we're not completely stuck here, all right? So with that, I bring my graphics in and they land right there. Say I've got something that I would like to capture a paragraph style of. So I've got this font and I found this really cool font that I really like. And so as I go through and I use this font, I thought, okay, you know, I really like this kind of hand scripted font. I'd like to capture this as a paragraph style. So if I'm typing, I don't have to remember that font and that size. So I'm going to select my type, and I'm going to go under my window menu, under type, paragraph styles, 
and I'm going to capture this as a paragraph style. So I select my type, click on the paragraph styles cheese grater, create a new paragraph style, and I'm going to call this wonderful script. And it's going to go ahead and capture all of the settings that I have selected in the type. You'll notice that I can add this to my library as a default here. Okay, now this is where you want to make sure you add it to your right library here. I've got lots of ones called my library, which happens all the time, but it will add it to the current library that you're in. And I do need to change the name of my library. I'm going to click OK. Now it's added it to my list of paragraph styles, but it's also added it right here. So how does this work? Well, if I were to take my type tool and I were to draw a container here, let me get back to my type tool and draw a container, and I've got a different font selected right here. I can just go to my library panel with my type selected and double click on my paragraph style, and there it is. Now this paragraph style I can use in InDesign and Photoshop without having to remember what I actually put in here. So this is nice. So I can capture colors, I can capture objects, I can capture virtually anything that I build or create or do in Illustrator. Now, if I want to go and share this with somebody or collaborate with somebody, I can. I can go to my library's drop-down menu, the cheese grater here, and I can collaborate with someone. And when I collaborate with someone, this will allow me to log on to my Creative Cloud app. Okay, This is where everything is stored. And if you don't know, you can go in and uh, just go into your Creative Cloud application and you can put in your email address and you can get a hold of your emails here and just put in whoever you want to invite okay, to collaborate with your library. And so you have a choice of what they can do. They can view it, they can share, they can edit, or they, so if they can view and share, or they can edit, they can edit and share so they can go on. So you, it's not just like somebody can get in there and mess with your files, okay? So this is one way to do this. We're gonna come back to that web-based item too. Here, you can also share the link to your library. Here, I'm gonna rename my library, which is a good thing. So I'm going to type in libraries for my video here. And, okay. I can't type. Libraries. There we go. I'm going to click rename. So now I have a much better name for this as well. If I want to get rid of the library together, I can just delete the whole thing too. Now, when I talked about viewing on the website, okay, Everything's being saved to the cloud, okay? And the cloud is basically your Creative Cloud website. And so if you log on to the um, assets.adobe.com, which by the way is your link to get to your assets, your libraries, you use your username and login, which is what you use for your Creative Cloud login, and you will be able to go right to your library. Now I've got multiple libraries. So up at the top of my screen, I'm going to use my back arrow and these are all my libraries that I have listed in here. So I can edit, I can see the ones that are owned by me, the ones that have been shared with me, and the ones that I'm following as well. So you can see a whole bunch of content in here, and I could actually just click on any one of these to see what's going on with my library, which is also going to be the same thing as going back in and viewing my libraries here in whatever method and whatever mode that I want to see. So this works out very nice. Now, I'm not limited to just taking something and putting it in my library. You'll notice that when I created a paragraph style, it gave me the option to put that into my library right there in the dialog box. Well, the same thing is true is when I create a color. Now, a lot of people go into their color picker and then pick their color this way here, and it really doesn't do anything whatsoever. But if I were to go under my drop-down menu for my swatches here, and I create a new color swatch, or go into my swatches panel, you'll notice that I could then choose this, add to my library right here, choose the library I'd like to add it to, slide my sliders however I'd like it to be, click OK, and not only does it add it to my document here, but it automatically adds it into my library here as well. So there's lots of benefits of going in and using a library here 
because you've got all your content right here. If you never use the library, okay, that's fine. It's still stored there for you. You know, say you're out and about and you've only got your phone and somebody's like, oh, you know, I somebody needs a file or they need that color or they need that style or something. Guess what? You can just log on with your phone. You can share that library with them and they have that content. So this is just a really quick overview of what a library can do for you in Illustrator. We're going to go in and we're going to show you other ones with Photoshop and InDesign and show you how these libraries can work with each other. It's pretty awesome. So now we're in InDesign and working with libraries in InDesign, very similar to the way you work with them in Illustrator. The one difference is, is that it's not called a library here in InDesign. It's called the CC library, your Creative Cloud library. And this always confuses me because I always look under L for library, but not in InDesign. They put CC in front of it. So if you're looking for that, that's what you get right there. Now, I have a layout here, and this is actually pages from my book on Illustrator. And what I have is my library that I created here in Illustrator with all of my colors. And what I love about this is that, you know, these colors that I created in Illustrator are right here. And all of my graphics and also my paragraph styles too. So if I wanted to go in and I wanted to apply a paragraph style or get some text, even though I created text in Illustrator, I can drag it right from my library here. If I had something in here where I wanted to create a shape and I wanted to then fill it with a color, I could select my shape, and with my fill selected, I could simply just go in to my library here, and I could apply that color right to my shape. That easy, okay? Beautiful. If I had some text that I would like to drag in here, I could drag my text in here, and I could simply place that text, and it becomes completely editable text inside a container, just like any other text. If I had something in terms of a paragraph style, I could select my object or my type. And that paragraph style that I created in Illustrator, I can apply right here. And then it also adds it directly to my paragraph styles here, called up my paragraph and character styles, and it added it right there. So that's pretty awesome. And yes, there's a lot of paragraph and character styles. I'm gonna undo that. When it comes to putting graphics in from an InDesign file, remember that these graphics were placed in here. So Joe went under File, Place, and placed them in. So when I grab a graphic, and this is an Illustrator file, and I can see because I hover over this and it tells me it was created in Illustrator, I can drag and drop this into InDesign. And then I simply draw my container and I can place this into InDesign. And this is the equivalent of going under File Place. It's just that I'm going through my library. Now, because everything that's in InDesign, when you place it, it creates a link back to the original. Let's go into the window menu and call up our links panel because this is going to be something helpful. Here, when I have placed that bass backpack in here, you'll notice that when I hover over the name here, it actually shows me that it's coming from my library. And I see that little cloud. Okay? And that cloud is telling me that it is linked to my cloud and not an actual file on my hard drive. Why is that important? Well, you know, if you're looking for these files and somebody sends you something and you see this little cloud, you'll know that it's in the library or the cloud, okay, where the under assets.adobe.com, where these um, library files are stored. Okay. So this tells me that this is not sitting on my hard drive. It's actually part of the cloud. So that gives me a good indication of what's going on. Now, with these graphics here, I can treat them like any other graphic in, L in InDesign. If I would like to edit the original here, of course, the shortcut is Option or Alt double click. And when you Option or Alt double click, you're going to open up the file that you Option or Alt double click on. And I can go in and I can make changes to this. I can save this file. Now, if I make changes to this right here and I decide that I'm going to fill those with a different color, and then I save and I close this file. I'm going to save and close this file, okay? And when I do this, I'm actually editing the graphic 
in my library, okay? So when I come back here, I can update it, but you see that that change was actually editing in the library. And some people are like, well, I don't want to do that. And it's like, well, okay, but if you were to do this with an actual file here and you were to option or alt double click on this file and say, change this one in Photoshop, you're actually changing the original file, okay? So if you want, go into your graphic here, right click on it and duplicate it, place that duplicate file so that you have two so that you can edit one and make something different. It's no different. It just so happens to be that this is being stored in the library. Okay. Now, what can I do if I've got something in InDesign that I would like to then put into my library? Well, these are screenshots. Okay. So these are screenshots that I've taken and I've put into my layout. And I'd like to grab this screenshot for future use. So I can select the screenshot, go under my add content button, and I can add this as a graphic or I can actually just drag this right in. When I add this in, it takes a while for the preview to go ahead and generate here in InDesign. And I'm not sure why it takes longer in InDesign to generate the preview, but it will go through and it will generate that preview. You can also double click on the name here and name it. So I'm gonna call this my screenshot for my swatches so that I can actually search for these things because if you name it just simply graphic one, graphic two, graphic three, which you just, it names it when you drag them in, that's not gonna help you when you use the search function, okay? So I can drag and drop from here and also into here and put this stuff in and upload it to my library. Same with colors, if I have some type of uh, container or say I highlight something either with type or whatever that may be, an object, I can click on my add content and I can grab the fill color, I can grab the text, and I can also load this paragraph style in here too, and that's going to go ahead and load in there as well. Hovering over any of these, it's actually gonna show you exactly what it is. It tells you what it is with your tool hint. So it's, you're not guessing about what's going on. This is a header, so it's Museo Slab 515 point letting a 14. It's like, okay, that gives me a pretty good idea of what I'm looking at. So very much, same, very much the same as Illustrator, but a few other little things that we can do with InDesign. And now we're gonna jump over into Photoshop. in Photoshop. They have expanded this incredibly. I'm gonna call up my Libraries panel from under the Window menu. It is listed under Libraries, not CC Libraries like InDesign is. But what they've done in Photoshop here clearly is showing the way that they want you to work with your content um, in a way that's much different. And it's also combining other um, things that Adobe has created so that you actually get all this content in one. And for several years, they've had apps on the phone where you could go in and do Adobe Capture and you could capture color. And they're kind of bringing this all around into the library. So I wanna show you a couple different things that we could do here, which makes it really nice. With our bottom of our libraries panel, we see that we have a couple extra, we have one extra button here, which we don't have in our other libraries in InDesign. And that is this new library from document button. And what's interesting with this is that you can capture what you have in your Photoshop file and put it right into your library and actually create a new library. So I'm gonna click on this button and here it's gonna give us a list. Now, if I had just a normal layered Photoshop file, nothing would go into this unless there were certain parameters. And here they are. Character styles, colors, and not just colors that you've chosen, but actual color, fill, or gradient layers. If I just have a layer that is filled with a solid color and I didn't use my new fill layer or gradient layer, it wouldn't pick this up. Any type of layer styles, if I would have got a bevel and emboss, inner, outer glow, it will pick that up as well. But it'll pick up smart objects too. And it says move the smart objects to the library and place them with links. So what does all this mean? Well, we're going to click cancel here and we're going to talk about this. So smart objects are simply protected objects in Photoshop. Whether you've opened up 
your object, and you actually have gone in under and say open a smart object, or you've gone in and you've right-clicked and you've actually converted something to a smart object so that it can be scaled and transformed and also protected, but it can also preserve a whole bunch of content in there. And smart objects is a whole different topic. But anyway, if you want to preserve this and put these into your libraries, your images will actually have to be smart objects. Very simple. Just right click and say, I would like to convert this to a smart object, which is what we did. And so now when we add this content in here, you can see smart objects is one of those things. So I'm going to click create new library. And this is the name of my file. And it's going to put all this content in here that was based on what it can do. So a fill layer, a gradient layer, a smart object, and so on. Now, typically, a smart object will have a little double square in the corner here. In fact, I'll show you what this looks like if I were to right-click on this image and convert this to a smart object. This is normally what we see in the corner. We see that little page and box icon. Well, this is also a smart object, but the difference is, is that this is actually based in the cloud, basically where our libraries are stored. So when you see this, it may look a little bit different, but it's going to work exactly the same. The difference is, is that the image is not stored right on your hard drive with a temporary file within this file. It's actually stored in the cloud. Now, these are going to work like any other um, smart object will. I can't go in and I can't use my edit tools on here like brushing or erasing or anything, which is true with any smart object, but I still can transform these items, I can still rotate them, and I can scale them. And of course, when I scale something that is a smart object here, I can scale it down super small, and then I can scale it up. And of course, that scaling does not degrade the quality of the image, which is one of the many awesome features of a smart object. But in order to get these into the library, I do have to have them as smart objects. And then I just have to follow the other parameters. So if you do click on this button and nothing comes up, it's because you haven't gone ahead and satisfied one of the things you can uh, that is supposed to go in there. And you can also learn more about the libraries here. You can click on that link and go in there. It's definitely worth trying. Now there's another feature that they've added too. I'm going to go back to my library that I was putting my other content in. The previous sections of this video here, we talked about InDesign and Illustrator. And so this was the library that I was using. I was dragging my content in from Illustrator. I was dragging my content in from InDesign and also my colors. And you'll notice that these things are grayed out here, okay? Because some things are not always available. I try to make them as available as possible. So if I were to go in and want to grab any of my content in here and drag it into Photoshop, I certainly could. Now remember, this was a vector smart object in Illustrator. So if I drag that in and I place it, it's going to tell me this is what's happening. It's creating a smart object that will link back to the Creative Cloud libraries. Yep, we knew that. And this is to get the original separated layers not linked to the libraries, hold down the option. And it's like, oh, right. Because in the Illustrator video, I showed you how you could drag it in. It showed it kind of as a, an X, kind of like a, a placed image in there. But when you hold down your Option or your Alt key in there, it's going to bring it in and it's going to give you the ability to edit it right there. But this is an original separated layers one, not linked to the libraries, so it's actually going to create a copy. And we're going to go back and we're going to show you that in Illustrator because it's very important to know this. Any content that's placed in frames are always placed as smart objects. So I didn't hold down my option or my alt key. I just simply dragged it in here. And now I'm using my shift and my option to scale proportionately and from the middle. And then I click return to set my transform. This is my vector smart object. Now I know this was created in Illustrator. One, because I created it. And second, because when you go and hover over the image in the library, it actually shows me that this was created in Illustrator. This is my smart object icon, smart object in the cloud. If I double click on this, it will launch Illustrator where it was created. And I can change the attributes of this, whatever I want to do, save and close the file. And I'm going to save and close that. 
it is going to update my library because I've done it directly from the library. And there's my object in here with the updates. Now, one of the things it said if I wanted to bring something in here, but I didn't want to have it linked to the library, is to hold down your Option or your Alt key, which is what I'm doing now. The cursor doesn't change, but when I bring this in, and I place my image in here, I'm going to set that transformation. You'll notice that it didn't bring it in linked to the cloud, okay? And I, by holding down the Option or the Alt, it still came in as a smart object, okay? Because it's still protected but you'll notice that the cloud icon is not there in the corner. What this means is if I double click on the smart object icon there, I'm going to open this up and I may make some edits to this in here. Say so I'd like to change the color of this to match this right here as well, and maybe change the handle right there. Now this is a temporary file that was saved in Photoshop. But I'm going to close out of that, jump back over to Photoshop here, and now you see I get my change here. It didn't change my library, and that's the difference. If you hold down your Option or Alt when you drag this in here, you will get a copy specific to that file. If you simply drag it in here to any of your documents, in Photoshop, InDesign, or Illustrator, and then you go back to your Smart Object and edit it, if you didn't hold down your Option or Alt, you will be editing the original, and that change will be seen in the Libraries panel. Good to remember. So with this content, if I were to go in and come down here and try to do a new document from Library, I could, or a new Library from the document, because it's going to grab my Smart Objects, and it would take these and put them into a new Library. And I don't need to do that because I already have this. So this is some really cool stuff. Now, I want to show you this. I'm going to grab a brush and I had gone in here and was playing with the maple leaves here. And I'm going to pick a foreground and a background color to make this a little bit fun to get some maple leaves in here. Okay, so a little bit of color with the maple leaves, and it's like, oh, this is really awesome. Now I want to capture this and just put this in to my library. And I can do that just by going in to the bottom of my library and click the Add Content button. I can grab the foreground color because that's what I was painting with in my toolbar. I can simply bring this in as a graphic, and because it was on a layer all by itself, it will just bring it in named with whatever layer I have named here. And it will just simply bring this in this way. But that's not the cool part. I'm going to create this from image. And create from image goes in and does something that you may not be familiar with. If you've ever used Adobe, capture on your phone, guess what folks, this is kind of like the next stage. So based on what I have on my layer, I can create a pattern. And this is all just adding this to the library. I've got different styles of the pattern here that I can click on, and I can change the scale and the rotation of my pattern. And down in my window here, I can move my area around, and this triangle, or this triangle, or the square, or this uh, triangle here is going to give me my preview. And you can see that I can do some crazy kaleidoscope kind of stuff. Oh my gosh, seriously? Yes, seriously. Now I'm going to save this to my library, and it's going to put it in here as a pattern. I'm going to jump over to shapes here because you know what would be cool? If this were to auto trace this. I'm going to invert this because I want this kind of uh, shape and or this style here. Is it going to create a vector? Yes, it will. I know. Crazy, isn't it? You can go in with your eraser tool, and you can go and you can set how much you want to erase. If I want to get rid of little things here, this adjusts the size I'm done with the eraser tool. I can invert that. I can smooth it as well. And I can control the level of detail, kind of like the level of exposure on this. I'm now going to add this shape to my library. Okay? Now, you'll notice... We've got patterns in here, which we haven't seen before, and the shape is actually going to be a vector shape because it's going to go in here. I can do color themes as well. Oh my gosh, I can grab a picture, and I, I can simply grab the content here, and I can choose the different color modes that I'd like from, from this, and it can grab those colors, and I can move my little color circles around to register the colors, and this too I can save to my library 
as an entire color theme. This is crazy. If I was doing gradients, yes, you can use the same image to go and hover over the areas to get a gradient. You can control the number of gradient stops here as well. You can also add images directly from this Create From Image panel. If I were to click on this and I were going to pick up an image here, say my panorama, and I would like to put an image directly into this window right here. I'm going to grab this panorama, open. There's my panorama, and I can do everything that I just did with this other image. And it's like, oh my gosh, oh, this is like totally amazing. I can create a pattern. It's like, oh, I love that pattern. That's cool. Drop it right in there. Yeah, this is all from the library. Totally new, totally awesome. It is absolutely amazing. So this is how we can get stuff in to our libraries. Now, based on what we've just done, we're going to jump back into Illustrator and we're going to show you how this content that we've gotten from Photoshop can now be brought into Illustrator and then also InDesign. Back to Illustrator, we're going to do a quick review now of what we've just covered in the last three sections. So I now have a fairly robust library of content. And this is the image that I captured from Photoshop with being able to go in and convert my image into vector. Now, I, want, I do want to edit this artwork, so I'm going to hold down my Option or Alt key and drag it onto my Illustrator file here. And by doing that, I'm actually creating an, an, basically an edited version of this that's not going to be linked to my library because I may want to go in and play with some tone on tone here and kind of have a little bit of fun with that. Okay, So if I didn't hold down my Option or my Alt key, I would be working directly with the content from my library and editing it from there. So there it is. All vector right there from my Photoshop file when I took my little leaves and brought them in. If I were to bring in something like this into Illustrator, which is where this was created to begin with here, Again, if I wanted to have it editable, hold down the Option or Alt key and then bring it in and then place it. And now with that content, I could go in and I could double click and edit to isolate that in here and get that content. Okay, so a lot of cool stuff that we can do. Now those patterns that we saved from Photoshop, okay, that's pretty cool, but it's not patterns like you think would be in um, Illustrator. So basically what this is, this is kind of more like an image. Okay, so it kind of gives you that, that cool image effect. And so I'm going to hold down my Option key. I'm going to drag this in and I can get my picture right here and I can scale this right here. Now keep in mind that this is an image, okay, because it did come from Photoshop and also if you look up here too, We've got our image trace command up here. So while these are patterns, yes, they are, but not in the strict sense of how we create a pattern in Illustrator, but that's, everything's there, all that content. Now I'm gonna jump over to InDesign and I'm gonna show you the same thing. Now, because in InDesign, we don't have the direct ability to edit many of our things, like our graphics or our images here, they just come in as placed objects. And when I grab any of these and bring them in, no matter what they are, so if I want to bring in this layered Photoshop file, I can drag it over and simply click and drag, just like it would be placing an image in here. And it places that image. And of course, it looks low resolution. I can always right click on this and set my display performance to be a higher display performance to see just how that's going to render. Now you'll notice, usually when I have a file that I place in InDesign and get a link up at the top. Well, because this is the my cloud, it doesn't show a link, it shows a little cloud. So that just tells me it's coming in from here. Now, I'm going to bring in this B right there. I'm going to click and drag and bring that into, and it comes in right there. Now, what's interesting here is that I held down my option key. Okay. And so you'll notice that it didn't go ahead and it didn't create a link to my library. Okay. It just brought it in 
as a graphic. So let's go into the links right here. And you can see that this is my smart object that came in. And it's a little bit different icon here because it's actually embedded when you hold down your option or your alt key. It's not actually creating a link. So when we held down our option or alt key, when we dragged it out of Illustrator, out of Illustrator's library into Illustrator, that gave us the ability to edit it directly there. InDesign works differently because we don't have the ability to edit our image or our graphics directly in InDesign. We have to go back to the native publication. So here, the option or the alt key actually gives me the ability to embed the file in here. So different tricks or different um, setups here. Again, if I need to choose any color, I can draw a container and then I can grab my colors, make sure my fill is selected. And that color theme that I grabbed from my capture session in Photoshop, when I had done my leaves and I had put all this stuff into my libraries, it actually captured all those colors, which is totally cool. You do notice though, but I don't have access to my patterns. Okay, they're there, but I don't have access to them. I can click on them, but they're grayed out, which is the same problem that we had in Photoshop. So we're gonna jump over to Photoshop here, and you can see that our patterns and our styles and our text are grayed out in from this library. And yes, we've got text in Photoshop, and yes, we've got paragraph styles in Photoshop, but the format doesn't work the way these were put in here into the library. So they're there, we can have access to them in a different way, going to the cloud or in other applications, but we don't have access to those particular things in Photoshop. Now I'm going to jump over to After Effects because After Effects has a library too. And what do you do with motion graphics? Well, a lot of times you create stuff in Illustrator. And there it is. We've got all of our content in here. And again, certain things are not available. Those are grayed out. Sure, we can see them, but we just don't have the ability to edit. But there's my color themes, all my colors, and then my images and my vector graphics in there for me. So being able to work with this content here in the libraries is absolutely amazing. Um, you can put stuff in here, you can share, you can collaborate, you can change. It just It's amazing what you can do. And it's something that people are going to definitely get used to because as we get different devices and different ways we collaborate, then it's definitely going to be the way you want to go. Going through and sharing and being able to gather other people's libraries, reach out to people to collaborate, can all be done from your libraries panel drop-down menu, the cheese grater. Here we can create a new library if we'd like, just simply say create new library and you type in your library name. And of course, then it's going to come up in your list of libraries here at the top. If we export libraries, exporting a library is pretty simple. You choose export and it tells you where you want to select the location here. And it's going to come up as a CC um, library file here. You select whatever location that you'd like and you click export. What that does is that gives then gives you the ability to go in and say, send that to somebody or share that to somebody, basically creating a copy of your library. Now, if you're on the receiving end, you can go and you can import that library. So if somebody gives you a link to it and you download it, you can then import your library, say, okay, here's where it is, select it and click import, and all that content will come in, kind of like a nice little suitcase. Being able to collaborate, when you click on the collaborate, it's going to launch your website and you put in uh, the email addresses of the people you'd want to collaborate with. And then, as I had said previously in the videos, you've got the ability to go ahead and just have them view it, view it and share it, view, edit, share, whatever. If you'd like to share a link with somebody, this will launch your Creative Cloud, just like the Collaborate would. In this case, what you do is you simply copy the link here and it will allow people to follow what you've done and allow saving to the cloud. So here you can just copy this link and then you can share this with somebody and then they've got that ability to be able to see what you're doing. I can rename the library. I can also delete the library here. I can always show the names of each and every item on here, which takes up a little bit of space. And then of course, you can always go and view this on website. And of course we just did, we click on this, it brings you to your Creative Cloud website. And 
I always have a hard time remembering where this is if I'm going in all by myself. So it's assets.adobe.com and then you can get in here and see that. If I return to you kind of the overview page here of my assets right here, this is where I can go into my creative cloud and I've got all of my files that I can save to the cloud. I've got my libraries. I've got everything that I've published using the publish online feature in InDesign, anything that's been shared with me and anything that's been deleted. So I'm going to jump back over here and here you can see the deleted items. And this is really important because you may have deleted something because you did this and yeah, I del deleted a lot of different things as I was going through and practicing with this. But you know what, if I want get want to get something back, I can say, oh yeah, you know, I definitely wanted my happy face back or my element here. I can go and I can click on this and I can restore this or say, no, I really did want to delete this. This may be an old version and I don't want to get confused. So that's just a really quick way that you can manage, share, import, export, delete, and save your libraries.